What's up guys, welcome back to another video where we're going to be going over a celebrity's car collection. The way these videos work is that all you have to do is put down in the comments down below the name of a celebrity you would like us to cover. And next week we'll be talking about the person who is the most recurring in the comments. Now today we're going to be talking about a tennis legend, probably the best, to arguably the best tennis player of all time, Roger Federer. <laughs> Roger Federer has had a long and incredible uh, tennis career, winning many, many Grand Slams. He has earned a lot of money over the years through not only his prize money from tournaments, but also through loads and loads of endorsements with Rolex, with Uniqlo, with Nike, uh, and as you'll be seeing a lot of in this video with Mercedes-Benz. Known to be very classy and down to earth and humble and a likable man, uh, you're not gonna be seeing any particularly flashy cars, but there were so many comments asking for Roger Federer's car collection. So we thought we'd cover it uh, today. Now, there aren't really any cars that we have found that he's clearly just bought himself. He seems to be enjoying the fact that he's got this partnership with Mercedes and driving around in a bunch of Mercedes. Now, there is only one car on this list that we could get our hands on, which is not a Mercedes, which he's owned. And that is a Lexus LX, which was also a partnership given to him a while back, many, many years ago. And since he has never really been spotted driving it, but it is the only only other non-Mercedes car that we thought may potentially be sat in his garage. He lives mainly in Switzerland, he's obviously got children and a wife, so he needs a lot of space, so the Lexus LX actually kind of makes sense. Now that we've gotten that out of our system, let's go into a long list of Mercedes. Most of them were probably gifted to him, the only ones I'm not too sure are the SLSs and we'll get to those a little bit later in the video, but effectively I assume he was just given a lot of Mercedes. Let's kick start with the CLS 450. Really nice car, ample power, five doors so you can fit some people in the back. Good looking coupe sedan, effectively. Uh, awesome looking thing, clearly a sponsorship deal. And apparently he was then driven home, well he drove one home and has since had one for his twins, for his kids. That's the first in a long list of practical Mercedes. Anywhere from the R-Class, which has since been discontinued, which was a perfect car actually back in the day for young families a really luxurious loads of space you could fit whatever you needed in the back it was effectively you know they still make the B class it was a larger version it was like the uh, what the S class is to the C class you know so you have the B class and then a bigger more luxurious version of that is the R class now he had one of these back when they were super fashionable they actually didn't sell particularly well so it's a model that has been discontinued and now they are just continuing that format as a B class another very very practical car is the Mercedes minivan the V-Class, uh, so Roger Federer has had one of these now. No photos of the interior, uh, has he, because a lot of people, and specifically celebrities, tend to trick out their V-Classes to have them completely modified on the interior with TV screens, coffee machines, uh, anything you want. Now, it's been confirmed to us that he has a V-Class, has been given through a partnership uh, a V-Class. Now, what has he done to the interior of that? I'm not sure. But he's definitely had one, alongside other Mercedes 4x4s, the GL, which was the biggest 4x4 in the lineup from Mercedes, and now the GL E63 Coupe. The Mercedes naming system is super complex. Effectively, now anything GL is a 4x4, and they've used the usual Mercedes acronyms to go through the sizes of the 4x4. So Mercedes, you know, the smallest you get is the A class, then you go B class, C class, E class, and S class. Now, those are kind of the base models. I hope I haven't forgotten any. Then, if you go into 4x4 versions of those, you effectively just add a GL and then you have all the different sizes. So GLA to start as a small one, GLB, GLC, GLE, and then GLS. And that's how you go through effectively the 4x4. So that only came in recently on the newer models. That's just to give you some context as to what car Roger Federer has. The GLE 63 AMG is the most powerful version of the GLE. You can get it as a hybrid, you can get it as a petrol engine, and then you can get it as this twin turbocharged V8. Also petrol engine, but just bigger than the others. Ton of power, ton of torque, looks awesome. It's got center locking AMG wheels, completely kind of pimped out interior with Alcantara and a really cool steering wheel. Awesome looking car, boasting an engine that Roger Federer knows quite well because it is a V8 that he's had in plenty of other Mercedes. If ever you wanna go top down, but also have the option of going coupe, you get, like Mr. Roger Federer, 
a Mercedes SL. Haven't actually been able to have confirmation over exactly which engine he's had in his SL. Now, there have been a few generations of the SLs. When it came out, the original SL55 AMG with the twin turbocharged V8 was a beast and everyone wanted that car. Then the SL model line was kind of updated a little bit. And now in the latest version, actually sales have gone down quite a bit. But Roger Federer still has one in his collection. In his Mercedes collection, not really a car collection, it's a Mercedes collection. He's also had not one, but two Mercedes SLS AMGs. Now, the one that has been the most publicized is his white Mercedes SLS AMG Roadster. Uh, so this is actually a naturally aspirated 6.2 liter monster of a V8 with one of the longest bonnets around front. It's an awesome, awesome looking car. And one of these, again, it was a huge press event and a lot around the fact that Roger Federer would have one of these and he had himself a Roadster. Now where the twist comes in is that he was actually seen in a coupe version. Now the coupe version is actually a lot more desirable these days and going up in price a lot faster than the Roadster because it has got the infamous Gullwing doors. This is a car that was originally made as a tribute to the original 300 SL Gullwing from a while back. So they brought back those Gullwing doors and since have not done it. Now, Roger Federer was seen in this car. There's a little video that you're probably seeing now of him in this car. And his passenger was no one else than Rafael Nadal. So those, those two clearly get along quite well. They were seen in this SLS. Now, I'm not sure if this was a personal car of Roger Federer's if it was a press car, if it was for an event, we haven't been able to get too much information, but he's been seen in a red SLS coupe, which is probably the most exciting Mercedes we've seen him in, my favorite of his collection, but not the latest and greatest, which is the AMG GTS. Now, this is quite a, a, quite a car, it was the replacement for the SLS, but actually didn't boast more power and wasn't more expensive. They kind of brought it to a more affordable, well, affordable is a big word, still a very expensive car, but they wanted to bring it to a slightly larger audience. They got rid of the Gullwing doors, and that's actually what made the SLSs go up in value so much more, that it was kind of a discontinued model as well. As well as the fact that the AMG GTS was no longer naturally aspirated. This has twin turbochargers. Solar beam yellow is the color that Roger Federer's was delivered in. Again, another press car. You guys were so new to ask for it, I really wanted to talk about Roger Federer's collection, but as you can see, it's completely different to any of the other celebrities that we've covered. He has, well, well, obviously a very lovely and very kind and very generous partner in Mercedes-Benz who have allowed him to spend a lot of his time in these Mercedes, not necessarily having to drop some major coin for them. So he's done very well for himself, but clearly is more reserved than a lot of the other celebrities we've spoken about and hasn't actually spent a lot of his huge fortune, which no one really knows how much he's worth, but he's reported to potentially be around about now becoming the first billionaire in tennis. Now, I'm not sure because a lot of articles will say he's worth about 450 million, others will say 900 million. Really hard to know, but he's worth a lot of money. He just signed a $300 million 10 year deal with Uniqlo, so he's financially stable. Bit of a different one for this celebrity, but you were so many to ask for it. And I mean, the guy has a lot of Mercedes and he's got two SLSs and an AMG GT. He's got loads of really cool cars. So it wouldn't have been correct to not do this video, but very different because clearly he worked with his partners more to get his hands on a nice car. But congratulations to him on all the successes and a lovely garage straight from Germany. Anyways, guys, thank you for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you again very soon. Remember to comment down below next week's celebrity and we'll be seeing you again in not too long. Cheers, bye-bye.